Hi everyone, I'm going to do a dog vlog. I've got my two doggies joining me, Betty and Poppy. Um, going to go through your questions one at a time. So the first question is, what would be my most important piece of advice for uh, a new dog owner? I'd just say, do your research really, and make sure that you're getting the right breed of dog to kind of fit in with your lifestyle, how much exercise they require in particular, um, I'd look into um, what certain breeds are prone to developing in terms of medical conditions, speak to your vet about that, give us a call and uh, I'll be more than happy to chat with you on the phone. I'd say definitely get your get your new dog insured um, because if something does go wrong it's it's amazing to, to have that cover so um, the best possible care can be provided, they, they'd be the, the main things. Can we use artificial grass in the garden for dogs? I have limited experience of artificial grass in, in gardens, but what I would say is as long as the drainage is okay, um, then I can't see any reason why not. Obviously, if the drainage is poor and the dogs are having having a wee in and things, and, uh, and it ends up kind of collecting underneath, then clearly that's gonna start being quite, quite smelly and things. So. As long as the drainage is sorted underneath, then I, I don't see any, any reason why, why dogs couldn't have artificial grass in their gardens. What's my stance on species appropriate raw food diets? I've got an open mind to raw food. I know it's very popular at the moment. It's, it's really quite fashionable. Um, people are, are looking into um, to raw foods. Obviously they're being told that their dogs would eat raw foods out in the wild. What I would say is that the dogs that we've got and have evolved over millions of years as pets aren't really wild dogs, they are pet dogs. So I just bear that in mind. Um, raw food can work very well for certain individuals, but if you are feeding raw food, then you need to be very careful about the health and safety of it because on that, on that raw food, there's gonna be lots of nasty bacteria like salmonellas and campylobacters and things that could easily give you food poisoning. So for example, if your dog eats raw food, do not let your dog lick you in the face because that is potentially very dangerous. So um, just just have a think about the whole hygiene aspect of things. But, <laughs> oh, there's Ziggy. Um, have, a, have a, a think about the hygiene, but um, raw diets can work very well in, uh, in certain situations. Is chocolate really bad for dogs or is it just the same as for humans, i.e. it's not healthy but it won't kill us? The thing is with dogs, the answer to that question is, it, is, is chocolate can be very dangerous to dogs so it is different than humans. Um, they, they they lack a, a, an enzyme that allows them to, to digest um, part of it. It's, it's, the, it's the actual cocoa, cocoa itself in, in the chocolate um, and uh, without being able to kind of digest it properly um, it can lead to to toxic substances building up in the in the in the dog's bloodstream which can affect um, their brain and, um, and and cause seizures and so in general the better quality of the chocolate for example a dark chocolate um, would would potentially be more more toxic um, whereas a, as a milk chocolate or a uh, or a white chocolate that hasn't actually got much cocoa in it would, would be much much less less likely to to, to be poisonous. Um, every individual is different though, so one dog could have a, a huge tolerance to it. I've seen Labradors eat whole boxes of chocolates without causing them any problems whatsoever. But at the same time, you can have dogs that aren't very tolerant to it at all, and you, you could have a I've known once a, a German Shepherd to eat a real small amount of dark chocolate and actually die from it. So it is, it is a, a serious thing, um, and if they do eat a lot of chocolates, it can cause other problems like even pancreatitis and things like that. So it is more of a serious situation than humans, definitely. And the last question was, um, do the worming tablets that, that we use um, cover for lungworm. Yes, they do. Um, dogs can get lungworm from eating slugs and snails. Um, the, the, the worms that we use do cover for lungworm um, as a standard one tablet every three months. But if your if your dog is known to um, to actually um, sniff around slugs and snails a lot, um, then what I would suggest is is actually giving them a worming tablet once a month. 
And that's the dog log.